Hello and welcome back to the Workplace Podcast hosted by the Lit team. Now, before we jump straight into our topic today, I just want to give a huge congratulations to us. We have partnered with IBM and we have tailor-made a learnership for 10 learners with diverse skills and given them the opportunity to not only be locally equipped with these skills, but also to branch out internationally. So guys, well done, well done. Now, we're going to jump straight into our topic, and that is describing the emotions, challenges that you face on your first day in the new job. I open up to the floor. Please share your experience with your first day at a new job. I want to ask you to answer this. (laughs) That's all that fun for me. (laughs) Okay, so my first day, um, at the time I was only working until half the school and I didn't have much to do and I thought, wow, is this what every day is going to be like where I just have to wait in order for someone to give me a task to do and you go and do it? Um, So I didn't really do much my first day, so my nerves were okay. But the following week, I had training and I was all over the place. And I needed to learn so much within the span of one month and only working from eight to half to small. It was a lot, but we got there. <laughs> to give context to the viewers, Kawa, this is your first job, am I correct, in yes. learning it today? Yes. Brilliant. And uh, what are the, some of the challenges I know you... You spoke about them, but we're really going to deep dive into <laughs> your first experience. Uh, Zakia, do you have any questions? Yep. How are, I'm Why were you bored on your yet. first day? I feel like you ended and you had a list of things to do. You can't say that you were bored on your... I already had a list prepared for you. <laughs> but you didn't give it to me on the first day. Like, okay. What okay. I knew I had to do was that you gave me admin. I had to capture a few things and I'd done that with that in the space of a half an hour because you showed me so quickly and I grasped everything. So I was done. And then I was sitting and I was like, okay, now on. <laughs> yeah, I do remember Hawa keeping me very busy when she started because she kept replying and saying, task done. And I thought, but like, I need time. <laughs> To get the next one ready for you. <laughs> I felt like I was being chased. I had, I remember speaking to a friend of mine and she asked, how's the new lady working out? And I'm like, she's, I'm actually working very hard since she started. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm busier. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't be, I should actually be a bit more relaxed. Um, if I have to remember uh, my first day at MWeb, I will, I will benchmark it against that. I think just that feeling of uncertainty, like you, you're kind of floating around, you don't know anyone, uh, you're not sure if you're smiling too much at people and coming across a bit too friendly, or you, you're just very disorientated. You're really not sure what to do with your face, actually. It's like you, you almost want to be seen, but you also want to hide at the same time. <laughs> Especially for an that. introvert. Especially for an introvert, it becomes very difficult because now you're trying to act, you know, you want to present yourself well, first impressions, of course, but at the same time, you're questioning everything. Am I, even the dress code, when you enter, you're thinking, am I dressed appropriately? Is it, you know, and people are so relaxed and inside jokes. Those are the most awkward ones because some people would make jokes and you don't get it because obviously you're the new guy (laughs) And you're just silent and sitting there and people are laughing. You, you, you almost feel like the outcast. Like the first few days, you're the outcast and, and you're trying to fit in, you're trying to squeeze in, you're trying to find your place in, into the whole mix. Companies do try and make it as friendly as possible, but you're still going to have that feeling. You're still going to feel yeah. older. And I would say don't panic too much if you feel lost, especially on the first day. You're going to feel lost. You don't even know where the toilets are. You don't even know where the canteen <laughs> is. Very important. You need your coffee. Um, but all of those things, you just don't know. You just have to learn it from them. And I always say, even though you don't know everybody's name, I mean, you meet depending on the company size, but you meet a lot of people. You're not going to remember everybody's name. But eventually you get there and you start learning everybody off by hand and all of that. That's, yeah, rough days. Rough. First day is always rough, but it's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, I think my first day, I've heard, I had one company that I started with and they had so many acronyms and there was one acronym for a, for a device and they kept on calling it a MIG. And what I know is a MIG is a Russian jet, jet fighter. And I was wondering what's this company got to do with Russian (laughs) jet fighters the whole time? (laughs) 
But it, yeah, <laughs> but in the meantime, it was, it was something completely different. It was crazy. Uh, agreed. I um, the jargon can be quite frustrating mm. to get used to. I hand it back. Well, what what are the tips you could say to give to a person who is experiencing their first day? One tip each. Arrive early. Claim you took my job. He read late. my notes. <laughs> <laughs> he read my notes. He was asking for his homework, and, I, and he says, "Be no. clever." <laughs> no, that's work not smart. Work swear. smart. Exactly. That's there that's you go. Not. You read my notes. I wrote my. He says I didn't prepare my notes, and I wrote my notes down. I said it's prepared. It's in my diary. Go look. I prepared, and I have seven because I couldn't remember if Ross asked for three or five. I have seven, and arrive early was the first one. Come on, Craig. Perfect. I've got it on mine. <laughs> Zakia, Zakia, I'll I'll let you I'll let you give all of your tips. Okay, good. Thank you. So oh, wow. thank you, Craig, for arriving early. Yes, arrive early. Always arrive early. And when I say early, like be there fifteen minutes before eight o'clock. So if you're starting at eight, be there fifteen minutes beforehand. Um, have a positive energy, even though you are nervous and you might be an introvert. Just feel happy inside because that projects outwards, and and people will notice that about you. Um, smile and greet, and if you're feeling a bit, you know, bold, introduce yourself. And it's nice to say which team you belong to. So, for example, if you don't know the department name, you can say I'm part of Ross's team. It helps people put in context, like which area of the business you belong to. Um, yeah, we don't always get our laptops on the first day and we tend to hide behind our screens, right? So if you're going to be browsing on your cell phone, I really wouldn't be sitting like that. Put your cell phone flat on the table and don't be on social media. Browse articles and like news pages and things like that so that you at least look a bit lit. <laughs> um, and if you do get your laptop, uh, find out immediately who are the right people to speak to to set it up before you go to Netflix? That's those are my tips. Perfect. I, I love them because it's also in uh, you could say overlapped into the common mistakes. So could you say that the common mistakes would be the opposite of your tips for a positive introduction into the your new job? Yep, definitely. Brilliant. Guys, I, I want your notes like Sakia, please. <laughs> Let's, uh, I only have one. I only have one. Just one. And that is something that I implemented myself is um, always compliment someone. You, you, you put each other at ease. It's sort of like an icebreaker. And then you create a conversation with them. So I would find anything that I could look at and say, oh, that looks nice, whatever. And, and just speak to them. You know, I think that sort of creates that. Oh, OK, he's a nice guy. Cool. Uh, he's open to talk. Because like I said, I'm an introvert. So me creating a conversation from from nowhere is a bit difficult for me. So I start with a compliment and that usually tends to, another thing as well actually, is also ask questions about what they do. And then those who love their job will obviously start telling you all sorts of stuff. This is what I do, this is what happens. I remember the digital marketing guy, I just asked him, okay, look, what do you do? What do you, what's going on there? And then he started telling me a whole bunch of stuff. It just started flowing. I was like, okay, that's great. So those are the two things that I tend to implement. Compliment and ask them about their job. Is that why you complimented me? You said, you're so easy to talk to. Was that your <laughs> no trick? No, so is it the the truth truth? <laughs> no, it isn't. No, I actually use the truth. I don't, I don't find just anything to say. Obviously, I look at, oh, okay, okay, this is what I like about this person. And then I, I, I mention that, and that usually just triggers the conversation. So, yeah, okay, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> now I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing the tips, guys. And now we, we're moving into our next segment of this podcast, and that is preparation, attitude, and more for our, for our success on the first day. So, what I mean by this is, what goals should you set for in your new job? Yeah, for me, it's um, learning new things. Be open to learning new things and creating new skills for yourself. Um, and try working your way up, see what the other people are doing, ask them about what they're doing, and then see if you can learn anything from it and implement it. In and for me, to add that, um, Hawa, is 
also to align your personal goals with with the job now. I think that's when the crunch time it's the crunch time you find okay, I'm here now. How do I align what I want as well from this position? Uh, to summarize it, find your why as quickly as possible. Why am I here, right? As soon as, soon as you find that, it raises a whole lot of other questions that you can ask people in terms of resources that you are going to need, any type of assistance, things that you, are, you feel you are weak at, need advice about. I think it sort of opens up your mind as well to think in that sense and not just wait for someone to give you things. Oh, okay, this is, uh, you don't want to be, <clears throat> I always say I don't want to be a person who is given work because I feel like that means I haven't thought of it myself. You know, I haven't thought of the job as something that's personal to me as well. I haven't looked at my goals as well. So when I start looking and questioning, okay, why am I here? What is the whole point of me being here? And what is my Monday look like? As soon as I ask my, myself that question, it opens up what type of resources do I need? Do I need some help on certain things, if, especially when it comes to systems? Because sometimes you'd find that they're using a system that you've never used before. So as soon as you ask yourself that question, you realize, okay, the first thing I need to know is figure out their system. Terminology is as well all those things as soon as you ask that then it's easier for you to set goals and say okay fine this is where i'll start off from first i need to find out this and this and this and how to use such and such and such and such that's that's brilliant i think what we're all leaning towards and i know everyone rolls their eyes when people mention this uh, specific terminology or whatever it is smart and i'm sure we all know what smart goals are so i think there are in quick maths five of us on this call could we each say what each letter stands for. I'll go first. Uh, S stands for specific. M measurable. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who's next? I had to say that. I had to you guys want to see my notes? How I'm Craig? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So A is attainable or achievable. Oh, it's just the goal setting. Oh man, the goal setting course on LUT because there is a goal setting course, and in there, there's a module on SMART. Yes. Oh, responsible. There we go. No, no. <laughs> relevant, right? It's relevant. <laughs> it is. And relevant. T? Yes, it is. I was going to say realistic. Yeah. And T is time. Everyone knows that smart. I think we all, when when we learning something, uh, especially at college or high school, they always talk about smart, and we say yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we all remembered rote learning, and um, but actually, if we if we implement it in our lives, we'll see that actually attaining our goals becomes a lot easier. And the reason why I want to speak about this and open it to the floor is I think that a lot of the times. When we are in a work environment, we can be so overwhelmed with all the tasks that we have and all the pieces of technology that we can use to align ourselves, that we make sure that we meet the, the deadlines. But then we also can't always have the, the side, I call them the sidekicks, which are uh, short tasks that need to be done now. So with everything that you have and you're feeling overwhelmed, right, I think if we adopt what would you say or how would you give people, the viewers, short little tips on how to attain these goals? So is it writing it down? Is it using a specific software? What do you use on a daily basis in order to get your tasks done? I have a to-do list that I write down in my book. And as my day goes, I'm either adding, removing, and many days I'm carrying it over into the next day, but that's how I track my tasks. I feel the same, but I don't physically write them down. I use the notes um, app on the laptop. So in the hour I go and I see what I planned for the day so far and what I have yet to do. And I'll add if I need to. I'm I think a combination of both. <laughs> Hybrid. So you use some notes on the PC and then some are right into the book. It's a bit of a muddle up, but it works for me. Actually, same, same here, uh, Craig. Um, I do the same. It's I write a full list on, on an, uh, a note and then um, on my calendar, I then prioritize what to tackle first. So it's a combination of both. Do you guys avoid uh, technology? Have you found that it helps you a lot better than 
written tasks? Can I be honest? To me, I find that it just creates another task within the task. Mm. Because if I have to write something down on a piece of paper, or if I have to go into, I mean, like Microsoft has had tasks and all of that for quite some time. But you've got to go in there and then open it up, add a date, add this. Add that. You're actually creating more tasks, creating the tasks, than actually just writing it down in the book. It's so much simpler. So technology is there. Um, some people find it easier, but to me, quicker just to write it. Or open and open a post it and done. I use the normal notepad on the laptop because I'm specifically sitting with the laptop, so it's easy to access and having to go through pages on a book or to have an extra book next to my laptop um, that I am working on. So just to make it a bit easier, not to have too many things around me, um, I prefer to use one device with one thing. So with me, the reason why I also include having a calendar um, uh, using technology is because what normally happens, especially when you write things down, you write, you have your list, and then you turn the page. And then tomorrow, there's something else. And then you start writing your list, and then you turn the page. And eventually, all of that, um, there's, there's, it's just chaos. Because now you have to go back. Oh, we did speak about this. I needed to do this. And you have to go back and relook at your, uh, your previous list. Because every day there's something new that might pop up that, that seems urgent that you have to do as well. And you write it down. And another thing comes up and you write it down. And so the, 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 the online calendar, so to say, what I do is it's what puts everything into sort of a structured manner. So yes, I've jotted it down and then I look at, okay, what do I need to do this week? I have to make sure if the week is done, what I'll be happy with done, the, the stuff that I'm, I need to make sure they are complete. And then I put those things into my 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 um, um, Google Calendar. That's what I normally use. I put it on my Google Calendar as, as my task. And then I make sure if anything happens this week, at the very least, these are the tasks I need to have completed, then my week is successful. You know, and then I move, I work from that. It, it's easier and it's more controlled. And then I take the next batch for the next week. Uh, on on uh, Monday, I take the next batch, put it on to what's left. Obviously, things do fall behind sometimes. And then you move everything in another thing to the next week. The, the, anything that has fallen behind and move it to the next week. So it's because for me, yeah, it does get complicated when it's just notes. When it's just notes, <clears throat> it does get a bit complicated because you move, you write something else down that someone else said you need to remember it. <laughs> And you have a notebook, but you don't really know when to do what, you know. You should see my dad's, uh, he's old fashioned, he likes his diary. And on his diary each day, it, there's like one word or two words, and then it's like a whole page of him doodling. That's his whole diary. <laughs> he's in a lot of meetings, must be in meetings. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Now, before we leave the segment on setting goals, I want our viewers to please smash that like button we have our goal right here a real work related goal and that is 13 likes can we get 30 likes team would you like 13 likes or a little bit more than that let's take it up to 20. Um, now this leads us to our last segment and that is goals versus aspirations now the definition of an aspiration is a hope or ambition of achieving something it's really broad. I'll give my own definition of it and then I'll open to the floor to give your definitions and how you view them, right? So as, at my aspiration is to aspire to be a leader in my career, right? It's a broader goal. Now, how is that done? That is done by me doing the small goals each day, each week, each month, each year, and eventually I will become a great marketer. Now I open it to the floor. I know I've possibly beaten up the word aspiration, but I'm sure you guys can give us a better definition in your own terms and versus your goals. Over to you. Okay, for me, I'll simplify it. I, I know um, Zakia will have the best definition to it, um, but for me, it's it's usually at, simply attached to feeling. Um, how do I want to feel 10 years down the line in terms of my work environment, um, where I'm at, uh, in terms of my career? So it's usually based on feeling more, rather than the actual task or goals that I need to uh, complete. So it's, yeah, 
the best way I can describe it is the feeling. I want to have the feeling of I'm in control of my life, a financial freedom, you know, all of those things are, are more feelings based, but then goals and just bring it down to, okay, what are you going to do to get to that feeling that you want in terms of your life? I agree with you. But, um, for me, it's more of where really do I see myself in five years time? And what did I do in order to achieve that vision that I'm making? Excellent. I think it's also don't get lost in the job. <laughs> uh, oh. What I mean by that is make sure that you have that aspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, rather have that aspiration than not. Because some people, they'll get into their first job and they'll just stick with that job. But that's all they do. They, they lose that focus. Try always keep that. Make every day exciting. Think mm-hmm. of the next adventures, all of that. It's good. Uh, just one more thing as well. What I like about having aspirations is that um, you're also able to say no to certain things. It gives you the power to say no. Because if you don't have that feeling or your why, um, anyone could offer anything and it could be a good thing. They could sound good to you. Uh, it just reminds me of a job where um, it was a sales job. Um, uh, it just, so it was between two choices. It was either me going into digital marketing and e-commerce store, um, or I was being promoted into a sales position. The sales position, I, get, I got paid more, right? The digital marketing position, I was going to get paid less than what I was already earning in that company. And I had to then decide, is this all about money? Or is there a particular place where I want to be? So, yeah, it gives you the power to say no to certain things. Some things which are difficult. I mean, it's not easy making such a decision. But because you know your why and where you want to get get to, you are able to say, look, this is, this is my path. As much as this looks attractive, this is where I want to go with my life because there's something that I want to uh, attain at some point. Otherwise, I would be in sales and I've never met you guys and I'll be earning a lot of money. <laughs> I like, I like what, what you've touched on there because um, really aspirations influence our decisions. In fact, you have better questions in the interview if you have aspirations. You have, when it's your turn to ask questions, you, you, you know what you need from, from the company in itself. So you actually have questions. And if you don't, I, I can even go as far, as far as to say, if you don't have questions, then you should start questioning whether you do have something that you desire in future. You know, if you don't, if someone asks you in an interview, do you have any questions for us? You're like, oh, I don't have any questions then that also is a bit of a problem because you are also interviewing them in a sense. And you interviewing them doesn't mean you have to impress them with your questions, but you have to figure out, are they aligning with you and what you want to get in your life personally? Because at the end of the day, it's still a relationship. It's a, it's in fact, it's a relationship that's, um, it's, a, it's a contract, it's a business transaction. I'm going to give a part of my life to you and I have to get, gain something as well because I'm going to spend seven hours plus minus investing my time that I could be doing something. I could be what doing whatever, sitting on the couch watching Netflix throughout the, the, the whole day. But I'm investing my time and my skill and my knowledge to build this project. All right. Now, I also need to get something from that as well. It can't be just a one-way street. And so when you have aspirations, it gives you that idea of, I need to make sure I'm getting what I want as well at the end of the day. 100%. I just want to throw some caution towards that. Um, mm. I was reading an article about the, the new generation workforce um, looking for certain culture, uh, work culture, companies that they will uh, work with. Uh, so work-life balance is important and also aligning to the company's goals. Sometimes it won't align but it is a very necessary experience for your journey. And generally your best learning curves come from the worst experiences. That, that's speaking from, from my own, you know, what I've been through. Uh, some of the jobs that I actually did not enjoy and, and some of the worst experiences I had became um, foundation blocks to, to help me where I am now. If we look at the coaching courses that I deliver, I'm, I'm able to deliver those because I've gone through very, um, challenging 
work situations and I've had to navigate and, and figure my way out of it. So now it's given me this aspiration of wanting to enable others um, not to go through that, but you can't avoid it. So I think when you are looking to align yourself with the company, uh, sometimes you will and sometimes you won't. And if you don't, it's it's not a bad thing to go down that route because it will teach you definitely what you don't want, but you learn a couple of things there that you might not learn in an ideal situation. What are goals, the stepping stones towards our aspirations? Definitely. And you have to take the good and the bad. I come across a lot of young graduates now that are only looking for what they want, but you don't know everything. You don't know what life has to offer fully. And you're not going to know that unless you you take the bad with the good. You can't, you know, get frustrated and, and want to walk away when things get tough. There's a reason why you are being put in tough situations. You need to pass that situation so so that you you can overcome future challenges. Mm. So how would you how would you balance the pursuit of immediate goals and long term aspirations? I think I mean you have major goals. And when you break down those major goals into little tiny ones, those become your milestones. So those become tiny little goals um, that you do every day. But all of it should ultimately roll up into your aspirations. So right now, you know, there's like 100 emails sitting in my mailbox that I really, really don't want to get to. But I have to. Because in those emails, there's going to be one or two that are going to feed towards my aspiration of wanting to enable others. And I'm not going to figure that out until I go through all 100 emails. Yes. I absolutely agree. In fact, I think with, uh, with a lot of people who just left varsity or, or school, um, as you said, Zakia, there's the impression of you want to do what you want. To, whereas sometimes you need to do what you have to do in order to get to what you want to do, you know? So, um, in, in fact, with my example as well, it wasn't, my first job wasn't the most ideal one. In fact, I remember when I got there, I thought, look, I'm just going to be here six months. I need to leave. That was my mental state. I was like, I can't stay here. <laughs> you know, it was no offense, but it was a, a whole lot of old people. I'm like, How, what am I going to learn here? <laughs> Like, I was like, what am I going to learn in terms of marketing here? I'm not going to be creative. I'm not going to learn anything. Six months is enough. I need to go. I need to go. I ended up staying for four years there, funny enough. Um, but uh, like what Zakia said, you learn a lot with that as well. And sometimes you have to do what you have to do before you're able to do what you want to do. You know? So, yeah. I completely companies, agree. Companies aren't desperate for you to work for them. Yeah, everybody has to remember that companies are there to assist you and give you career growth and all of that. And I mean, once you're in a company, a lot of companies give you that opportunity. They've got learning paths. They've got all of that type of stuff. It's available to a lot of people. Um, make use of it. A lot of people don't, but make use of it. It helps because in turn, it helps the company in the long run. As well. Yeah, so we have training available for all of you on the call. And in that training, there's goals and aspirations. And in the goals training, there is a SMART goal <laughs> module. That's what Skills Alliance makes available to all of us on the call. <laughs> and to our viewers out there who do want to sign up to the course, please, in the description down below, click on it and uh, you'll get straight to the course. So, guys, I see that we have given our viewers a whole lot of information I want to touch on a thought that you want to share with our viewers, the tips for the first day at the new job we've given them. We've given them specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timeliest goals. Oh, there you go. I got that right. And is there anything extra, that you, extra spice that you want to give our viewers um, who have these aspirations, who have goals, but haven't quite yet made it. Do you have any extra tips that you want to give uh, our viewers out there who haven't yet attained a job or are looking to get into the workspace, um, have these aspirations, have these goals, but haven't fulfilled anything yet? Well, if you don't have any goals up front and you're still figuring things out, on your first day, at least have a notebook and a pen in your hand when you're walking around that office. Just have your own notebook and pen ready. It shows that you are enthusiastic to remember and, and take down critical things. Uh, on my side, 
have the willingness to learn. I think if anything, even if you don't know something, um, a lot of managers or supervisors admire if you are showing the, the, the desire to learn it, you know? So being there and saying, okay, how does this work? What do I need to do? Write down the steps, you know? Uh, and, and just having that, I want to learn it. Uh, not, uh, I don't know how to do it. Um, um, you don't want to have the, um, I remember there was this company that I was working for where the students were hired and they'd sit for six hours and the minute the supervisor comes to them, why are you sitting there for six hours? And they simply said, I don't know wh what to do. Wow. Then that already for six hours, lunchtime, wow. they're getting ready to go for lunch, for lunch. And they say, I don't know what to do. And that alone speaks to you're not interested to you're not interested about this job there's nothing that you want to learn you know and so yeah for me it's just having the i want to learn even if it's something that's not related to is it's not related to what you're going to be doing learn it you never know what's going to happen in that job you never know so if it's a system that you won't be involved in just in fact just graphic design i i learned a system um so i was doing the marketing side of a company the, the marketing uh, i was handling the website and doing the marketing and um there was a graphic designer who would come in every friday so i had to make sure i have everything ready for him on friday um, um to design for the website and all sorts of stuff and then what i did is i went to him and said, just show me how the system is done how do you it was coral draw at the time um i said just show me how, how is it done and then i started learning and then eventually he's like, no, look, you can have the, the, there was a disc then, so you weren't downloading. So, <laughs> that's how your that. <laughs> so he gave me the disc, gave me the key, and I started working around. It's, it's, it's a funny story, but it's a bit sad because he eventually lost his job to me. Because they're like, no, oh. but we have someone in. <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but... <laughs> But just, it wasn't part of what I'm supposed to do, right? But they started seeing me working, just playing around with it. Like, no, but we have a guy who's willing to learn this, right? Mm -hmm. To be fair, on his side, this was his side sort of hustle type of thing. It was, he had his, uh, uh, his uh, main job and he would come in on Fridays just to do the graphic design thing. And I was a full-time person. And when they discovered, they were fine. You seem to be grasping this quite quickly. And they said, look, let's just use you. So you never know what's going to happen. So just have that willingness to, okay, let me just learn this. How does this work? You know, how does it does not have to be part of what you are going to do. And, and don't be tied to the job description, I would say. Don't put yourself, this is what I have to do. And that's it. I don't want to do anything else. I, I find that is the biggest mistake. You're putting yourself in a, what makes you unique is those little things that are outside of, 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 your digital marketing space, you know, the little things that you did that no, no, no other digital marketing person knows, you know? And so, and that requires you to have that willingness to learn, you know, you just ask, how, how, how is this done? How can I do it? Can I learn? You know? I think it also helps you just to even just get your own job done, your own responsibilities. If you understand mm -hmm. what that section and that section is doing, True. it makes your life a lot easier as well. But I would say as a tip is take everybody's tips from the video, but also have fun. You're not going to start off the way you want to be, but make it a fun doing it. You're not just sitting and you, oh, I need to do the shop because I just need to, and there's no other way about it. I just need to work my way up. Don't do that. Rather, make it a fun thing where you're learning and enjoying something that you not you don't want to settle in, but it's at least you've got something and can learn a lot from it. I agree. Enjoy the journey, good or bad. Enjoy the journey. I think it's a good topic for our next discussion is how do you make your job fun? How do you make the most mundane task fun? Thank you for watching our podcast. Please do go and have a look at our other podcasts because we have just hit a milestone. 95% of podcasts don't make it past episode three. So team, well done. Give yourself a Right, of course. In our very next episode, we'll be 95% ahead of the rest of the podcast the entire week, which is amazing. So if you like this content, please do subscribe. Please do hit that like button and stay tuned for our next episode.